understand it. It frustrates me to no end that I talked this kid up. I said in four years, five years, three years, he's going to be the best quarterbacks. He's going to have the most wins. And you know what? He's dead to me now. <laughs> it is nothing that he did. It's not his fault, but he is D-E-A-D -E dead to me now. Oh, we got it back because you've been running it the whole time. Man, Facebook Live. We should reshare it out and be like, we got sound now. We we went dead on Facebook Live. T so, type it out and say we got sound now. We got a bum cord, man. We yeah, that's any what time it is. Checking stuff. That's shame on us. We're playing. Da -da -da, we have. But sound. anyway, out of all the teams, you know what? I hope I'm wrong on him. I hope all these teams that passed on him are dead right, and his accuracy issues are too bad, and he can't survive and he can't play. Well, I'll tell you this: the surprising thing to me about this was he doesn't fit their offense right now. And I know that they hired new guys on the offense, right? Uh, but, but And I understand that. I, I know where you're going with this. But to me, you're going to have to restructure your offense to fit what Jackson does best. And the offensive staff that they have now are the ones that were with the Eagles when Michael Vick had his best statistical year in the NFL back in 2010. Like, how long did they give Flacco – Oh, Flacco, before the end of this season, not due to injury, Flacco won't be the starter. Super you Bowl winning quarterback that. will get pulled. He will get benched. He will get sat down. Here is his contract information, right? He so should he signed be coming a, up soon, He right? signed a new – well, he just signed a new three-year deal that pushes him all the way out through 2021. He will be an unrestricted free agent in 2022. I wonder but here, what, here's I wonder how, this how works. much is guaranteed. Do we see that? Uh, his guarantee is – he got forty four million guaranteed. His average salary over the next three seasons or four seasons. Uh, so he so this year his this signing is including bonus is sixteen and seventeen. Right? No, no, no. This is it from twenty eighteen through twenty twenty one. Yeah, but that forty four million guaranteed has already been paid out. Right? It's already been paid. Uh, that's so they can uh, yes. cut him tomorrow. If they if they cut him tomorrow, their cap hit is twenty four point seven five million. Yeah, but guess what? Lamar Jackson cost him nothing. So you sorry. paid $24 no, no, million no. Dollars for a quarterback. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the dead cap. So dead cap is if they cut him tomorrow, it costs them $28.75 million. Yeah. If they wait until after this season to cut him. Oh, they wouldn't cut him in the middle of the season. Well, not, not to cut. Well, just to. To release him. Yeah, to release him. If yeah. they release him in 2019, mm -hmm. cap hit is only $16 million. Oh, that's nothing. Because Lamar's yep. making chump change. Yeah. Compared to quarterbacks. So you, you cut you cut him at the end you, of the season. You bench him in the middle of the season if and you're he's trying to fight for a playoff spot. a really a high-paid backup. Yeah. And I think, it's, it's I think that's the way that it's going to go. I think it's going to happen, too. He's better than Flacco. He's better than him. I don't my know that right now. I don't my think, saving grace. Is, is Flacco elite? No. That, God, no. Please. <laughs> I'm playing. Oh, I'm playing. It's, oh, God, it's the barstool thing. In, you about threw me into a conniption <laughs> fit. No, I know that Flacco is not elite. Stuff. Flacco had a really good Super Bowl year where he had receivers that played out no, of their mind. and he played out of his mind, too. Right. I'm not taking away the Super Bowl year, but Nick Foles just played out of his mind as well. Yeah. But that doesn't mean Nick Foles is a premier quarterback. Ever since that Super Bowl season, all uh, Flacco has been is mediocre. If you look at every statistical number there is – he is somewhere between 12 and 17 in every quarterback ranking out of 32 teams. That is right in the damn middle. Yeah. That's right in the center. That's it. And, and yet average. he made all that money because average. he won a Super Bowl. Average. Let's talk about your uh, list of teams with the best draft. All right. We have the same top three. That doesn't shock me because I don't think it's close. I don't think it is either. I don't think it's close. We both have the Chicago Bears at number one. Yes, sir. That is not surprising whatsoever. The Bears hauled in Roquan Smith from line uh, from eh, a linebacker from Georgia. Uh, second round, they got James Daniels, a center from Iowa. They got Anthony Miller, wide receiver out of Memphis. Joel Iyegbunwi, Buniwi, whatever, not even linebacker from Western Kentucky. Uh, Bilal Nichols from Delaware. Kyle Fitz, defensive end from Utah, and then Javon Wims, wide receiver slash tight end from Georgia. Uh, look, their top three picks were, were where runs. it was at. Home they runs. were all home runs. Home runs. So, Roquan Smith, James Daniels, Anthony Miller, 
They got all of those in the first 51 picks of the draft. And that's an A grade for me. I think they got the best player in the draft. I think Roquan they got Smith. the most dominant player in the draft. And in five years, this guy wins defensive MVP awards. I've been bold on this kid. I bold. think they got the best wide receiver in the draft. And I think they got the best wide receiver in the draft, too. That is not, And that is not a homer pick. I, pro- I argued with a friend of mine up and down. This dude is He's better than Calvin Ridley because he does things differently than Calvin. He's physically bigger than him, and he's better than Moore. Yeah. He's just – he's the best wide receiver in this draft. We've got the Denver Broncos with the second best. No doubt. Now I want you to listen to this haul. Bradley Chubb fell all the way to fifth to them. So yes. where they might have wanted to get a quarterback in this draft. They would have taken a quarterback or they would have been the one to trade with the Bills. Yeah. The Bills traded up. But there was no need to because Bradley Chubb is possibly the best a player, Hall of Fame. The best player in this draft. Yeah. The, the best player in this draft today. was between Roquan Smith and Chubb. So so with Bradley Chubb and, and the gap Von between Miller, those two guys and everybody else, a lot of people had the guard from Notre Dame in there, pretty good player too. Yeah. Other than those three, the gap was massive. Yeah. Sorry, Barkley. It was massive. They also picked up Cortland Sutton from Southern Miss wide receiver or Southern Miss Southern yeah. Methodist uh, wide big, receiver, big, strong, tall wide receiver. Running back Royce Freeman from Oregon. He is a speedster. He will be able to do a lot with Case Keenum. Uh, Isaac Yeadum from Boston College, cornerback. Josie Jewell, linebacker from Iowa, which I was surprised that he dropped all the way to the fourth round, uh, but they picked him up. Deshaun Hamilton, uh, Deshaun Hamilton, wide receiver from Penn State. He was an absolute freak. Uh, Troy Fumagalli, tight end from Wisconsin. He was awesome this past year. Uh, offensive guard center from Arizona State, Sam Jones. Kelshawn uh, Berea, linebacker from Washington. I, I saw him play multiple times last year. And then running back from Arkansas, David Williams, who didn't get a lot of playing time, uh, but he was fantastic when he did. He was yeah. hurt several times, so that's why he dropped all the way to the seventh. But, man, they got an absolute haul. I they think it's John Elway's best or John they, Elway's yeah. best draft. They got a defensive stud and a wide receiver that I like a lot. That, I mean, that's what made the Bears pick matter so much to me. Well, they got two great wide receivers. Yeah, they got uh, they got a couple of really good, serviceable running backs. Uh, their linebacker Josie Jewell. I mean, we watched him with Iowa a bunch, and he made Ohio State look like chumps bad. last year. Bad. And then Bradley Chubb. I mean, it just just dra- could just possibly be the best Bradley player. Chubb. This was my problem. This was my Cleveland Browns problem. They did what I wanted Cleveland to do. As much as I love Roquan Smith, you, you take the best player on the, you, on the board. You could have had you could have had Miles Garrett and Bradley Chubb for a decade destroying the league. I'm going to tell you right now: if you're a quarterback and you play in the in the AFC West, they're pooping their pants. Yeah, and it's just a fact. KB jumps in on uh, on Facebook. He said, "Fun fact: Sam Darnold's grandfather's name is friggin' Dick Hammer." That yeah. is true. Yeah, he uh, he true. he was at uh, USC as well. So uh, we hadn't even talked about Sam Darnold going to the Jets. I, I, I'll go on and tell you well, this: just, I think it's a good fit. Yeah. But we'll we'll talk about. Uh, you think so much more about fit than I. I just want the best player, and and I don't care that if you're used to having that kind of player or not. If your offense is built around that guy, or I don't care. I want the best player. There are a lot of players that, look, fit for quarterbacks is huge. Disagree. Just couldn't couldn't disagree more. How? Okay, explain this to I me. I think really good quarterbacks, your top-tier quarterbacks that are going in the top of the draft or should be going in the top of the draft can play in any system. Hey, guess what? Josh Rosen's really smart. There's not a single offense ran in the NFL that Josh Rosen can't walk in and play, which is why he was the best quarterback in this draft. Okay, okay, not, you make not sense. Once a, you know who needs fit? Gimmick quarterbacks need fit. Yeah. Bullshit gimmick quarterbacks that don't know how to play real man football. Case, Case Keenum yeah. doesn't fit with you know what the Rams were doing. No. So he goes to the Vikings. I mean, there's a really good chance that Baker, I'm not going to crap on my team. I'm trying to be positive this year. But there's a really good chance that Baker's a gimmick quarterback. Because what do they run in Oklahoma? They run a gimmick offense. That's exactly what I'm pointing at. But but that doesn't have anything to do with the top-tier guys in fit. Okay? No, I'm with you on that. I'm not saying – look, 
But when you're ranking quarterbacks, you need to realize if you can play in any system, Did you I, should be I far more valuable. I didn't rank Sam Darnold in this instance here. Well, you I'm had just saying Sam Darnold he, ranked higher than Josh Rosen. I did. I did. Because I feel like he fit with more teams. I don't think that's, that Josh Rosen fits with a lot. Of, I think he fits exactly where he went. I think Josh Rosen I think could have that, gone to all 32 teams and been unbelievable. I think that Josh Allen uh, doesn't really fit anywhere. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. People have been really hard on that guy. <laughs> if the Bills hit on him, a lot of people are going to look bad. Uh, agreed. Bad. Agreed. But I just, man, going and looking at all of the and, – and a lot of people talked about him really well. I just don't see it. I don't see it. I don't I, like he. I'm not going to defend him. I'm just. I'm not going to crack. He on him he could end up. He could end up being great. But I mean, we saw the same thing with Jake Locker. For, like it, that's what he looks I, like. I, I know. So you know, Locker, I mean, I, was, Locker was light years smarter than Josh Allen. Which is you're talking about smart which is quarterbacks, scary, right? Smart quarter, and he was light years more athletic than Josh Allen too. Yeah, that dude could run. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. All right, so we had the Washington Redskins as our number three. Yes. Deron Payne, defensive tackle from Alabama. Darius Geis, running back from LSU. Jaron Christian, offensive tackle from uh, Louisville. Tony Apke, safety from Penn State. Tim Settle, defensive tackle from Virginia Tech. Sean Dion Hamilton, who has an injury issue. Uh, or not a, an issue, but a history. Uh, linebacker from Alabama. Greg Stroman, cornerback from Virginia Tech. And Trey Quinn, Wide receiver from SMU. They knocked this out of the park. Like They filled all their needs, but the first pick, they just took the best player in the draft. Yeah. That was available at that time. They they took the best player. Absolutely. And and that's that's what I look for. When teams talk about need and, and fit, I think all that's ridiculous in the first round. In the first round, I want the best player available, and I do not care if I've got six of them. Yeah. Guess what? Running back will never be best player available, so I don't have to worry about that being a problem, okay? But I want the best player available in the first round, and then I'll figure out my needs later. Because you know what? If you took Bradley Chubb and you didn't need another defensive lineman and you needed a left tackle, I bet if he turns into a stud, you could trade him for a left tackle. Probably. Better than the left <laughs> tackle you, you drafted. Yes. Agreed. I bet. Either way, you don't need Browns, a left tackle. My Browns need a cornerback. You know what's really hard to grade? Not really hard. What is absolutely impossible to grade in college to pros? Cornerback. Okay? But if they would have taken Bradley Chubb and he turned into the recce machine that they need, they could have traded him for the best cornerback in football. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's more valuable than cornerbacks. You had the Steelers. I did. As the number four team with the best draft. Who did you have? Uh, number four for me, I had the Titans. Okay. Uh, the Steelers had what? Let's see. They had Terrell Edmonds. They had seven picks. I I love I love the Terrell Edmonds pick. I well, here's the issue Edmonds though. He was it, Terrell Edmonds wasn't expected to go until the third day, and they took him in the first round. Okay. So that kind of surprised me a little bit. See, but you also reading things like that. I also said on our podcast I would take Shaq Griffin in the first round. I think he yeah. has first round talent and he didn't go into like the fifth or sixth round. I I don't think that I'm wrong if you're a team and you take him in the first round because I think he's going to eventually be one of the best safeties in football. And, and you he, might be right. And if he I might think right. that, I don't want to wait around just because I can and you're in the back of the draft. Now you you might be right. You might be right. All right, so Edmonds goes uh, number 28. They take James Washington, wide receiver from Oklahoma State, who replaced is, uh, Bryant. Yep, that they home run away. threat. Home run threat there. They also stole a third round pick from the Raiders. If you want to ask me who did the worst in this draft, I think the Raiders did the worst. <laughs> and that's a team I love, and you know that I think the Raiders going, were pretty bad. I think they did worst. Uh, Daniel chimes in on Facebook. He said, "Can we talk about the Cowboys taking a linebacker over Calvin Ridley?" Um, you you did good there. Not that I, I'm not a big fan of that linebacker, Gary Earmuss. I think Calvin Ridley is going to be a bust. I think Calvin Ridley went exactly where he needs to go. Ridley would have had too much pressure on him in, in Dallas. Ridley can't be a number one receiver. No, I think he's, he's going to perfect number two. He's going to be great in Atlanta, which is going to make my bust comment look bad. But as soon as Julio goes down, which Julio will go down, you don't want Calvin. Now you probably didn't want the dude you got. I hate that for you, but you didn't want Calvin. 
So I I don't think they wanted Calvin Ridley. They if anybody they wanted DJ Moore or Anthony Miller, a big receiver that can just go up and say my ball. Yeah, I mean that's that's With what you crazy need. athletic ability. That's a, <laughs> yeah. I hope you're right about the bust. Oh, I, I'm I'm right. I'm right. It, I'll Julio, be here to point this out if it's not. Julio Just will so miss. Know. Julio will miss at least three or four games this year. That's a fact because that's what he does. And as soon as he does, we will see Calvin Ridley's worth. But when Julio plays, he will be a stud. Absolutely, because he's going to get the second tier coverage. But believe that. All, All right. right. So the Steelers also took Mason Rudolph, uh, quarterback from Oklahoma State. That works out well with their wide receiver pick. Uh, and, and Rudolph, I think, automatically comes in and is the second-best quarterback on the roster because I hate Landry Jones with everything right. in my soul. So, you know, let me let me have a conversation. So, we're buddies with the dudes that were on West Lot Pirate. Give them a little love in yep. case they ever listen. West Lot Pirates, go subscribe to their podcast, yeah, they're, they're Northwestern good Podcast. They're good. They did a draft breakdown, and they were like, I think they're really so- – maybe it wasn't them. I've listened to a lot of podcasts lately. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was them. They were like, oh, but they're pretty solid on Landry Jones. I don't know why they took a quarterback. One of the podcasts. I'm sorry if I shamed it, it, who, them. Whoever and, this was. And, and they were like, he's done pretty well whenever he has to come in. And I just laughed and laughed. I thought, please let Gary hear this one day. Oh, my Lord. Please. You know what? It might not have been them. It was one I listened to yesterday. I listened to them yesterday. So they didn't understand why you would take a quarterback. Yeah, because why would you waste a pick on a quarterback? Because you already because got Landry, Landry Jones. Jones is, is the heir apparent. But yeah, okay. And I hope to God. If right. Landry Jones hope, is the heir apparent, I will I will quit well But I love I already, I already said once this year I was gonna quit watching NFL. But I like I like Mason Rudolph a lot. I really do. I'll just um, move straight to being a Tennessee Titans fan. I just uh, period. I'm already a pretty big Titans fan, but I I'm Steelers like by my heart. There's nothing I can do about I was raised to be a Steelers fan. There's nothing I can do about that. But but my God, if Landry Jones ends up being your starting quarterback, one, I already know everybody's going to get fired. Who's the you know offensive coordinator? Did they hire within? They hire the quarterback's coach? Uh, that's, that's a good question. I think they did hire their – well, no, they didn't hire Feetner. It was Randy Feetner. Was, uh, anyway, the Steelers draft was my, my fourth best draft. I, I liked the guys that they got at the top. I think they Oh, did they did. Job. Yeah, they, they hired Randy Feetner. That's what I thought. I thought they hired within. I'll be darned. Memphis guy. Yeah. Former Memphis uh, offensive coordinator. I hope he fails. Well, I mean, he was Historic, he was all right. Historically failed. He was D'Angelo Williams' offensive coordinator back when he was at Memphis. That <laughs> you know, was like 15 years ago. <laughs> they used to put up some points back then, we were, back when they we were, were beating Louisville. We were in like like middle of high school. Yeah, that, that's been a little that. while ago. A little while ago. All right, so, uh, so the last four picks that they got, which is really but, where right. a lot of this went. Yeah. Uh, Chakuma Okara 4. They got a tackle. Western Michigan. Yeah. Uh, Marcus Allen, safety from Penn State, went in the I, fifth round. I expected I like him kind of in the third. I like him. I like him yep. a lot. Jalen Samuels, tight end from NC State. He was fantastic this year. Yeah, and then Josh and Frazier. Josh Frazier, defensive tackle of Alabama, that I did not expect to go this year. So that was a little surprising. The Titans, uh, I think, it depends on how you want to grade. Like, if you got a big haul of players and you want to just grade teams on that, then cool. Like, I could see where the Steelers would be. The Titans only drafted four players. They got Rashawn Evans, linebacker from Alabama, traded up to get him before uh, the Patriots picked him. Uh, Harold Landry, they traded up Stuck. in the early in the second round to get him. Now, he had some medical issues, but he's fine. But, but he's fine. Well, I, I, I don't know health-wise that he's fine. If he don't have medical issues and he plays, it, yes, that he will be stud. a stud. He that was worth stud. trading up for. No, I agree. Uh, Dane Cruikshank, safety out of Arizona. He was fantastic. I, I've watched him multiple times. Uh, he's a playmaker. Just flat out playmaker. Say the next and pick. Say the last pick. Quarterback Luke Falk. I love this pick. I love this pick. Uh, look, you know who their backup is right now in Tennessee? No. Blaine Gabbert. Oh yeah, you need it. So Luke Falk could come in immediately. I, all right. So you got to be careful here. This administration that's running the team now, the the guy that drafted drafted Mariota, but yep. all the coaching staff, none of these people are attached to Mariota. No. If he, we've talked about this in the past. More important than your ability in the NFL is your availability. If he continues to not be able to stay healthy and be on the field, they will not. If if they are trying to do Patriots 2.0, they will not develop an offense fit for Marcus Mariota. And I they agree. Will find somebody else and move on. And Luke Falk can absolutely fling that thing he around. Can, I, listen, he is a system quarterback. He comes from the god of offense, in my opinion, Mike Leach. All offense stems from Mike Leach. 
Harold. But he's he's Mike, got he's but, got an arm. And he's got this guy size. Can sling it. Yes, he if certainly you, can. If you put all the coordinates of what you want in a quarterback physically into a machine and three D printed it out, Mason Rudolph and this kid, those are good picks. Let's talk about the uh, the number five team for you. You had the Seattle Seahawks, which most team or most uh, people sites gave them a really bad grade. Gave them like an F. Yeah. yeah. So those people are wrong. I- explain to me why I did this. I did this very very narrow mindedly. Rashad Penny is a really really good running back that ninety percent of the world did not see. Yeah, but would you take him in in the first round even if you don't have a second round pick? Um, they, they need a running game real bad. They've got to get a running game established or they're going to get their franchise quarterback murdered. Yeah. Okay. There was no, he was the best player available out of all the needs that they had. And I really like him a lot. And, and I, he probably wasn't the best running back available in my opinion, but I like him. I like him a lot. Um, getting, getting green from USC, that helps their defense. Yeah. They've got to replenish that defense. And that's what they did. After they took Penny, all they did was load up on defensive players. Well, so here's – they took Will Disley, tight end from Washington in the fourth round. They took Shaq Griffin, your boy from Central Florida, yep. linebacker, safety. Uh, they took safety Trey Flowers at Oklahoma State. He's awesome. I think he's really good. Yep. Michael Dixon, punter from Texas. That's going to help out your uh, field position game. Jamarco Jones, offensive tackle from Ohio State. Jake Martin, edge rusher, defensive end from Temple. And then Alex Mago, quarterback from uh, Florida International. So here's here's what I thought. I think a lot of people graded them poorly because they took a kicker, which I'm not a fan of drafting a kicker ever. Yeah. Why waste a pick? Um, and so that I, I'm not giving them any positives for that. I'm not really giving them any negatives for that because it's a late fifth round pick. It doesn't matter to me. I, I think Trey Flowers – did Trey Flowers used to play at Florida? Is he a transfer? Has he always been at Ohio, Ohio He's Ohio always State? been – he's always been For at, some reason, was there a Qu- Trey Flowers in Florida? There was a – there was a Quentin Flowers at South Florida. That might have been what I was thinking about. Anyway. He was a quarterback. And, 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 I, and I have made no bones about it. I think they got a first-round talent in Shaq Griffin in the fifth round. I think that's a steal. I think that's an absolute steal, and what pisses me off the most is they picked one pick before the Patriots, and there's no doubt that I think the Pats would have taken him. They were going to wait and take him in the late fifth round, and they missed him. Okay. This is why you take your guy early and don't wait around and hope nobody else takes him. You got a dude on the board you like, you go grab him. I took the Atlanta Falcons as my fifth best team. That doesn't surprise me. Calvin Ridley, wide receiver from Alabama, got him late in the first. Uh, at, way after anybody expected him to be gone. Uh, Isaiah Oliver, cornerback from Colorado. They got him in the second round. And, look, I'll tell you this, Oliver. Look, I watched Colorado play a lot two years ago. And then I watched him play several times this past season. And Isaiah Oliver can flat-out play cover corner, and they needed a cover corner. So they got a good one with him. Uh, Dedrin Sanat. Defensive tackle from South Florida. Big body. They need somebody up front. That works out well. Ido Smith, running back from Southern Miss. He's actually pretty good. Russell Gage, wide receiver from LSU. Obviously, LSU has not had much of a passing game, but Russell Gage is a fantastic player. Uh, and then the the linebacker from Yale that I don't even know. Um, but I think that the the Falcons hit some needs and and got some really good talent, especially for the position that they were drafting in. So I, I feel like they did really well for where they were. I wasn't impressed. <laughs> I didn't expect you to be. That's it's okay. all good. It is all good. All right. Um, let's talk about uh, some of these top undrafted real quick before we move into the next go round. Uh, I thought Riley Ferguson would go because he's six six and two hundred fifty pounds, whatever and he can fling the ball. I thought he would have gone, but you pointed out some other things. Uh, Nick Stevens, at one point in his junior season at Colorado State, people were talking about him possibly being a first-round NFL draft pick. The fact that he did not get drafted at all really surprised me. And these guys will probably get picked up for practice squads. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're all getting picked up undrafted. Yeah. Uh, Chase Litton, Marshall, another one of those guys, huge guy, 6'6", whatever. And and he led Marshall to a really good season this year. JT Barrett, uh, I don't know that it surprised me that he didn't go. Uh, running backs, Josh Adams from Notre Dame did not go. 
Uh, Daryl Williams from LSU, Akram Wadley, Cameron Petway. Now, Petway from Auburn uh, did not do much this past season. Uh, he's had injury problems, et cetera. Uh, it surprised me that Ralph Webb from Vandy, who was the all-time leader at Vanderbilt, that he did not get drafted. Uh, so that surprised me a little bit. The, these guys just happened to come out in a year where where running, it was running just, backs were just obscene. Let's see, wide receivers. Uh, there was not a single name on here that surprised me that they didn't get drafted. So right? Let's just move on. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Where else? Are there? There's like 57 wide receivers that didn't get drafted. <laughs> Uh, tight ends, uh, nobody, nobody that that you would expect. This was a really deep tight end class too. Yeah, but I'm I'm sure it's top heavy. Uh, Zach Crabtree from Oklahoma State, offensive lineman. Uh, Toby Weatherby or Weathersby from LSU. I was surprised about that. Hey, tell me, okay, so back to the quarterbacks. Tanner Lee from Nebraska got drafted. Did that surprise you at all? I don't know. I mean, I don't, that I, kid threw interceptions every other pass. I could not understand it. Uh, Austin Golson, offensive lineman from Auburn, did not go anywhere. Uh, defensive lineman, uh, Marcel Frazier from uh, from Missouri, Trenton Thompson from Georgia, Christian Lacouture from LSU. None of those guys went in the draft. I, I could not believe some of those. So, Tanner Lee went to the Jaguars, right? Yeah. Well, they're so, used to get well, some just, Yeah, I was about to say, they're just trying to get somebody <laughs> that won't make Blake, Blake look bad in practice. Uh, linebackers, uh, Sky Moore from South Carolina, uh, Mike McCray from Michigan, and then Matthew Thomas from Florida State. None of those went anywhere. I, some of these names, I was just surprised that they didn't come off the board. That's because they were really good in college, but college ball and pro ball is just different, man. Trey Williams from Auburn. Just different. He didn't go. Like, if, you, if you're if you not big enough, strong enough, or fast enough, and if you're missing any of those three, you don't get to play. Kevin Tolliver from LSU, defensive back. Just didn't show enough. Yep, didn't show enough. Now, they all end up on, uh, on you know, practice squads. Not all of them. Some of them. A lot of them end up on practice squads. Uh, Daniel Pinero from Florida. He did not get drafted. He was a place kicker. He was the number one kicker in the country at one point when he went to Florida. Uh, and then punters and whatnot. Kick, I mean, kickers should not be drafted. I, 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 that's something that has happened a lot recently. They just should not be drafted. Like a whole lot. It is so hard to pick talent. I won't. I don't necessarily need to have – A, I would rather have top-loaded picks – than backloaded picks. But more than anything, I just want as many darts to throw at the board as possible. Yeah. Because yeah. it's really hard to gauge these things. And if I got more darts than when you, if you... If you end up drafting I, a kicker that you don't necessarily believe in, you end up with Jake Elliott, who the Bengals let go last year. Yeah. And then the Eagles pick him up for nothing. Yeah. But you've wasted a draft pick. But you wasted a draft pick. That could, You could have taken some outside linebacker that nobody's ever heard of or a wide receiver with a chip on his shoulder that might turn into a stud. Exactly. Exactly. All right, I'm going to take a uh, – we're going to do a little ad right quick, and then we're going to play a little trivia before we get into NBA and NHL. You wanted the best online sports book? That's easy. It's mybookie.ag. They've got the easiest website layout, the best odds, amazing customer service, and payouts in only two business days. Check out mybookie.ag for yourself, and then when you sign up, use promo code WCE50 for 50% deposit bonus. That's mybookie.ag, promo code WCE50. All right, let's kick back in. Draft picks by conference. The SEC had 53. That is the 12th straight year that they've had 50-plus. Definitely a, uh, a big deal. Uh, the ACC had 46. The Big Ten, 32. The Pac-12, 30. The Big 12 had 20 picks. The American Athletic Conference had 18. Conference USA, 10. Mountain West, 9. MAC, 5. Sun Belt, 3. Who do you believe is the team that had the second? We know Alabama had 12. Who do you believe had the second most NFL draft picks in the SEC? Oh, in the SEC? Georgia. LSU. Okay. With seven. Oh, Italy getting in there. Yep. Georgia had six. Florida had five. And then Auburn, Mississippi State, and Ole Miss all had four, four. each. Uh, all time, who do you believe has the most NFL draft picks of all time in the SEC? 
Alabama. Alabama is number one. They uh, they beat Tennessee this year. Tennessee is number two. Alabama has 355. They are number seven on the all-time list. You're talking about teams that have been good for a long time. LSU's been good for a decade. Two decades. Mm, they haven't been good for two decades. I, I became an LSU fan less than two decades ago. They weren't good. What was, what, 17 years ago, 18 years ago? That's not two decades. Almost two decades. <laughs> You got to complete right. the decade to be a decade. Tennessee is uh, is number nine all time with three hundred forty six. Florida is number ten with three hundred forty four. LSU is number thirteen with three hundred thirty five. Georgia at number fourteen three twenty three. A uh, and M two eighty two has them at number eighteen. Auburn at number twenty two with two seventy three. Arkansas two sixty nine at number twenty four. Ole Miss two forty at number thirty two. And then Missouri two fourteen at number thirty nine. So the SEC has 10 teams in the top 40 all-time NFL draft picks. Pretty impressive. And that goes all the way back to when they were doing, you know, Texas A&I or Texas whatever. So uh, tell me the last time that each one of these teams did not have a single NFL draft pick. You ready? I don't know. Okay. I need a little bit more of a question. Go ahead. Okay. The, the, last, the last season – that each one of these SEC teams did not have an NFL draft pick. Oh, I would have no clue. I just I just think back to like when they weren't good, right? Vanderbilt. When they weren't good, <laughs> their entire career. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have started with Vanderbilt. Uh, this is impossible. Let's go with. All right, how about this? We'll start with the longest. This team has had a draft pick every year since since then. Florida. Florida didn't have anybody drafted this year? No, 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 no. No, no, no. Florida did, but it, oh. I'm, I'm asking you for the year, like around oh, the time period. I don't know, 1960 something, 50 something? 1951. Yeah. Nobody else is even close to yeah, that. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah. Uh, the next longest distance was Georgia, 1992. Yeah. Kentucky had none drafted this year and none drafted last year. Wait a minute. Oh, it was Western Kentucky. I was about to say, we talked about a kid from Kentucky. Yeah, we Western, about, Western Kentucky had one drafted. we talked about a linebacker from Kentucky. Nope. Nope. Western Kentucky. The linebacker was from Western Kentucky. Okay. So, uh, Georgia was 1992, Missouri 2004, Kentucky this year and last year. Uh, South Carolina did not have a single draft pick last year which is surprising considering what Steve Spurrier was doing with that bunch. No, no, no they were just all really young. Yeah. That's why they were good last year. But I'm, I'm talking about 2017. That's what I'm saying. That's why they were good last year is because they didn't lose anybody last no. year. In 2017. No, the, 2017 draft, the 2017 draft, which was 2016. That was the year yes. that, that, was the year that uh, you're, not, you're not following my logic. None of the players got drafted in 2017. Because they weren't draft eligible, the good players. They all played last year. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. okay. That's why they were good last year is because they didn't get anybody drafted last year. Well, 2017, the 2017 draft would have been seniors in 2016, which means that none of the guys from like the 2012 yeah. or 2013 class when Spurrier was winning 11 games a year. A lot of those guys went as juniors. You can't look at that. Which is crazy. I know uh, Jadavion Clowney and, and all that. I, I got that. But not a single player in 2017. Uh, when was the last time that Tennessee did not have a single player drafted? Ooh. I'm going to probably say sometime in the, like, mid-90s. 96? 2016. Oh, last year. Two years ago. Two years ago. And then they didn't have one in 2015 they either. Were, they were pretty small. Derek Dooley... I thought they've always had like one guy that was exactly. like exactly. You would always think so. Through. Yeah, you'd always think so. That's why I'd have thought it'd been like weird. Oh, you know what? I should have known it wouldn't have been in the '90s. That was when Fulmer was just pumping that. But well, Fulmer started in in 1992. Yeah, so so '96 yeah. Fulmer would have been putting tons of guys. Well, yeah, in they the they had Peyton Manning. Peyton yeah, Manning was, was '96. <laughs> I was wrong. I was way wrong. Well, I, I knew. Shut up. <laughs> I knew I was wrong when I said it. Uh, LSU. When's the uh, when's the last time they didn't have one? It's been a while. 93. You nailed that one dead on the head. Yeah. 1993. Auburn. When was the last time they did? This was surprising to me. Oh, those Chiswick years were bad after Cam left. 
It wouldn't shock me if it'd be like 2012. They were always buying players. You know that. Come on, man. Don't don't act like it wasn't 2012. Don't talk crap about Auburn. 2003, the season right before Before Cam, right before they went undefeated. Yeah. Well, no, not Cam was 2010. 2003 was that undefeated season under Tommy Tuberville. Oh, that is the undefeated. They, They got left out of the game. Yep. Yep. Damn. Texas A&M was 07. Alabama was 2008. Before that, it was 1970. Uh, 2008 was uh, after but, Saban's first so season. So let me tell you this. Let, 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 let's, let's talk about that for a minute, okay? Hang Which on. one? The Tommy Tupperville deal. That guy, there's a lot of people that know Tommy as just a great asshole. Yeah. That guy's a hell of a coach. Oh, absolutely. That, that absolutely. is unbelievable that he took a team with no – well, it could have been like the South Carolina thing like this year. Where, where they were all really they young. Were all, and then, they were all older, experienced, yeah, because the, the stronger, next season, bigger. They went undefeated and got left out of the championship. The next season is when they had uh, Cadillac, Cadillac Williams and, and, and Ronnie. Ronnie. Yep. Yep. And so, an unbelievable offensive line. Yes. Yeah, and Jason Campbell. And Jason quarterback. Campbell. Yeah. So, yeah, they had a whole bunch that oh, were coming wow. up. That yeah. were coming up. Uh, Alabama, 2008, Saban's after, right after Saban's first season. Mm-hmm. Uh, in 2008 is when they went undefeated up until the SEC championship. Man, game. you know they've been buying players forever. Oh, yeah. Come on. Believe it. Mississippi State, 2009 and 2008. They've been uh, trying to buy players forever, and they just can't. Ole Miss, 2013. Boy, them Houston nut years really did them in, didn't they? That's <laughs> some bad were, juju. It was, it was hard cheese. It was, it was bad news. Uh, 2008 before that for Ole Miss. Vanderbilt was 2015. Before that, 2011, they didn't have one drafted. And in 2007, they did not have one. So I know that Ole Miss is not nearly as big as a school as Tennessee is. But if Ole Miss doesn't hit on Houston, I mean on a uh, Hugh Freeze. Oh, they're in the dark ages. Look at Tennessee and look how when you go through three just misses on coaches, and I'm not talking about bad coaches or maybe some bad years. We're talking about just complete golden sombrero misses. Yeah. It devastates a program. Like and look at Tennessee. Well you can look Old, at what Alabama Miss, did. Oh yeah. Back in the uh yeah, back in the mid nineties. You didn't and, hold guys long enough for it to devastate your program. The problem well, no, is it was your just guys we missed so quick. many times. Yeah, but you yeah but you fired them quick, which is which is a dick move, but it's the right move. It's smart. Yeah. You Once you realize up. that they're not, I've said this forever. It. As soon as you know you have a losing hand, you fold it. That's why. Yep. That's why I believe that Flacco will be benched. If I was running that team, as soon as I find out this guy's better than him, I'm sorry, bud. You got to sit down. Yeah. And then after this year's over with, good luck. You are Thanks correct. Thanks for the championship. We appreciate you. You are correct. But, but Ole Miss, Hugh Freeze. No matter the, the, the trouble, the NCAA, all that other stuff that happened there, Hugh Freeze could have been the savior of that program because if they miss a third time and they're already not one of the big boys, they go to I mean they go to Vanderbilt level bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, because Vanderbilt is, is already at, – at, they're not now, but they were fairly even with them. But, but maybe they're not now because – well, Vanderbilt, that's just a rivalry game for some weird reason. They play every year. Yeah, it doesn't and, make any sense and, ever. And every time that a team plays another team every year, but, but yes, they, they always are, have their number. They are Vanderbilt, Kentucky level bad. historical bad. If if they don't have Hugh Freeze. Yep. But they got Freeze, and, and now Luke seems to be okay. He's doing we'll, okay. He's not we'll, doing terrible. Yeah. And we'll, 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 Time will tell. But Tennessee, you miss three times in a row, there is no – like, it's going to take – I used to say this in business all the time. You can't do something wrong for two to three years, get it backed up, backed up, backed up, and then expect to fix it in three months, six months. Oh, yeah. There's no solution for that. There's there's no quick it's fix. It's going to take – if it took three years to break it, it will take us at least three years to get out of it. Tennessee Vans? Man, you it, you it, need to hold on to Jeremy it, Pruitt for a little while. It might, it might take a decade. Yep, you need to hold on to Pruitt and let him build this program up the right way. He won't be a miss. He He's might done. not be the next Saban – or, or the second coming of a great quarterback uh, coach, he might not be less miles good, but he's not going to be a miss. No, not not the way that Butch Jones was a miss. Just a just a bumbling idiot, or or even the way that uh, Orgeron was at, at, at Ole, Miss. Ole Miss. Yeah, just, like he's, just Orgeron not, is worlds different. Uh, at well, yeah, LSU. Not, I don't know that he's good now. I'm not going to crap my team and stay positive, but yeah, 
He's we'll talk about him and LSU. A decade eventually. has changed. Oh, well, we but, get into college football later when college football yep. starts being a thing. Later on this summer, we'll we'll get there. Uh, you ready to talk NBA playoffs real quick? Yeah, we, we've already gone long, but Throw we'll, me we'll keep rolling. Yeah, half the people on Facebook couldn't even listen the first time. Yeah, it's all good. We'll we'll do it up. Here we go. NBA playoffs. The Cavaliers beat the Pacers in Game Seven to set up a second round matchup with the Raptors. Or Raptors. The Raptors. Good lord. Uh, even though the Pacers outscored the Cavs 40 seven points. It, it, forty points, seven hundred and four to six sixty four for the series. Now the Cavs are underdogs in this series. Uh, they're at plus one sixty five. The Raptors are minus one ninety five. Let's talk for two seconds about this LeBron James, Michael Jordan, whatever thing. Everybody that has one of these big national shows talks about this ad nauseum, right? Okay. Do, are we the only two people that really don't care about this argument? No, I don't know that we don't care. Here's here's the problem we run into. Okay, Michelle Beadle on uh, Get Up a couple of days. It was after the Game Five win where he just beat his chest and pulled his thing out and showed it to everybody and just did things that nobody's ever seen before to win that game. Um, came on and she made it clear there is a divide in our country right now with sports fans that love basketball. Yeah. Okay. There's a generational divide. The older people, our ilk and older, would say, you guys are just living in the moment and you never saw Jordan. There could also be some bias that we are clinging to the past so much that we don't It's nostalgia. Want, it's, we, we've built him up to be Andre the Giant, Davy Crockett. He was a real guy. But the further we get away from reality, how real was – where is the truth in some of these things? Yeah. Have we legendarily made him better than he is? Now, let me give you the reasons why, if we're going to have this debate, the, the, the logical – because I'm a logic guy for more than anything. Most times I use logic <laughs> and reason. I, I'll use emotion, but when I do, I tell you, this is all heart, no brains. Yeah. LeBron James just played the first season in his entire career where he played 82 games. Yeah. Jordan never didn't play 82 games. Yeah, he never missed a game. LeBron James does not play great defense. He can. He chooses not to. Jordan didn't matter if you were Kareem Olajuwon or if you were Larry Bird. It didn't matter what position you played. That night, Gary Payton, he walked down the court and he said, who's the best? I got him, and I don't have him for a series. We I got him the stop. whole game. I got him from the time the game starts to the time the game ends. Jordan was the best two-way player. But, see, we don't give – everybody shows out all these numbers that show LeBron's offensively has moved past Jordan if you look at all these statistical numbers. Well, yeah. The problem is, is that's because basketball is not really great at defensively. No. Other than steals and blocks, which are really hard to get – you don't get this guy averaged 30 a night, but when he played against Jordan, he got 12. We don't grade people like that. We didn't back then, definitely. Today we do plus minuses. I bet if we could retroactively go back against Jordan, A, his plus minus would be unbelievable off the chart. But second, look at the guys that he played against that he guarded. If he played Anthony Davis, I got him. Anthony Davis is a foot tall. I got him. I got him, and he ain't doing yeah. what he's doing now. I got him. And even if Anthony Davis goes off for 30, Jordan's got him. Nobody else covers him. I got him. Yeah. That's the thing. And it's what people of our ilk, of our age, have the problem with LeBron is is the flopping. Jordan would have never done any of that flopping. The toughness, the well, mental but, but and back physical then, just – Back then I there was no good. flopping. Well, there was no fl – you didn't have to flop because when they fouled you, they, they, they did throw your ass six, seven feet. Yeah. They, you they, didn't it, have was, to it was a real thing. And he never cried. And I'm not going to complain about LeBron flopping now because it's it, one, everybody does it. And, and to get the calls, you almost have to do it. I don't know. I think he gets so, the calls already. I, and, and he I does love get LeBron. the calls. I, I know he does. Is, every time I love I that Caleb argument. jumps in on Facebook and said, I wish I had a microphone right now. Oh, yeah. I'm sure everybody does. I didn't mean for this to become a, a thing. I, I, I was just, just, I just surprised. Think, I just think it's impossible to gauge across eras. I think that's where I land on this argument. It is impossible to say what would Wilt Chamberlain look like today. 
I don't as know. As opposed to LeBron he, or Jordan Because I think, Jordan I think or... Wilt was unbelievable, but he also played yeah. against five foot six white guys. Yeah. Like, he didn't have to play against, you know, like Anthony Kareem Davis Abdul-Jabbar. Or was, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar yeah. or Bill Russell. Like, he didn't yeah. go against those dudes. Yeah, it's just, it's just different. So and it, you can talk about all the stats in the world, about who they played against and all this kind of stuff. I, I know for a fact that Jordan never had to go up against a team like the Warriors. True. But that doesn't matter That's fact. in the grand scheme of things. Well, it, it like, does. No, hang on. It, it does. It absolutely matters. I'm not going to disagree with that. And, and I'm going to help LeBron out a little bit, too, on this Well, argument. because he also never had somebody like Scottie Pippen that stayed right. with him the whole time. LeBron. Or Dennis this, Rodman for the last three. This is the worst team LeBron's ever had around him. Now. I don't know, man. This one may be a little bit better than uh, than the one he had in 07. Okay. His first stint from his original contract, that's different. At, kept... at what point does it let's, – let's jump into this. Let's keep the train rolling here. At what point are we going to immediately just – okay, if LeBron's out, then we know that the Warriors are going to win the finals. None of it matters except for where is LeBron going next? Is is that going to be after this series? Do they do they lose to the Raptors? I don't. I, mean, I still got them. I still got them winning the West because they still have. Or winning the, the East. Winning the East. Yeah. Because they still have the best player in the East. They are. He's still plus better than one sixty five against the Raptors. I will, I will be betting money on that, and I will probably take that. I'll probably take that. I I've don't got, know that I've I got see them, them winning. I've got them winning the the East now. At even money, I, now that they're positive after this series, I'll I'll probably take them to to get better odds with it. There's still now. I would love to see the Sixers and LeBron. Yeah, I, I think we're old going. guard, new guard. I think we're going to. I think so too. I don't think that the Celtics can uh, can get there. No, um, they're, they're not. I mean, they're missing their best. There's three no, of their best four players. The are now out. The Sixers are favored. In game one over the Cavs, or over the Celtics tonight, uh, they're minus four and a half. But there's no series price listed, and I think that's probably because you don't know what like when these guys. Uh, no, two of them will not be coming back. Nobody trust. Nobody wants to bet against Brad Stevens. It's just scary. No, especially when you don't know what he's got. It's it doesn't matter. And it, it was the matter. same thing with so the, like the Warriors. Uh, there was no series price. Brad Stevens uh, is going to go down as the greatest basketball coach of all time. I think I could agree with that. He won't have the championships that some of the others do because we play in a different basketball era. Yeah. But that guy could out-coach Phil Jackson, Popovich, Larry Brown. And I love Pop. I love yeah. Larry. He could out-coach all of them. Let's talk about the Warriors real quick. Absolutely smoked the Pelicans in game one without Steph Curry. Still gave up 107 points. Before, like before the um, – before the series started, there were no odds over at mybookie.ag, which, got, by the yeah, way, if you want to sign they up. They eventually came up. Promo code WCE50. For it came series? up like the day of. Yeah, right? for the series. Yeah. For the series now. Well, I got them, I got them before game one. And I got the, the Pelicans at plus five, like 85 or something like that. Well, now you can get the Pelicans at plus 1250. Well, yeah, because they've all, they got down smoked. a game. Well, they're down, even if they – just because they're down a game. Well, but, they, but also because they got smoked – without Steph Curry. And there's a chance that Curry could come back. So if you like all the Pelicans have to do is win game two. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter if you got smoked in game one. That's right. Like all you gotta do is knock out that game two and then you got I mean you got home court back. Uh the other part of this, there's no serious price listed for the Rockets over the Jazz. The, yeah. Which is a little surprising to me if you got the Pelicans I plus twelve fifty. I think it's like, going to go five. I think the I think the Jazz got enough heart and pride that we'll, they'll win. One, they'll win one they'll game win at home. One of those games in Utah, and that team is a fun team to watch, man. If you're if you're a Memphis guy and you like Memphis basketball, you need to be watching and rooting for the Jazz because that is a Memphis team, just a island of misfit toys that don't know nobody wanted any yep. of these guys. And they are playing unbelievable basketball. Oh, and they got a rookie in Donovan Mitchell that is a absolute. Stud. Don't tell him he's a rookie. Oh, I know. He don't want to play. He, he that dude is good. I mean, thirty-eight points in that game six closeout. That he's was so uh, that was something else. Uh, let's move on. Let's talk about the NHL playoffs while we still got a little bit of time. All right. Okay. The Predators scored a two overtime win last night to uh, to tie their series with Winnipeg at one to one. The most fascinating story to me 
was the ti- and, uh, the Titans' offensive line smashing beers before the game. Taylor Lewan using a catfish as a luge was <laughs> absolutely hysterical. He downed a Bud Light before the game. Marcus Mariota was there. He doesn't drink. He looked so out of place. It, it, the whole thing about this surprised me because the difference in behavioral uh, judgment, right? Offensive linemen can get away with anything. But if a quarterback did that, it would be front page That's right. news. That's right. If Baker does that tomorrow, oh yeah, it would be it'd be over. Did you see it? Yeah, I watched. I watched every second of that game. Did you enjoy it? I don't know that I enjoyed it. It stressed me the hell out. You got the predator, or yeah, you got the preds Pe- in this, right? Pecorine has given up four goals in back to back games. That's stressing me out. It's stressing me out, dude. That's not cool. Well, you but can't win, win a series that way. Winnipeg is also the highest scoring team in the I know they're really NHL. good. I know they're really good. I know they are. It's just stressing me out. The the odds on that series right now with the, with the series tied 1-1, uh, it is minus 110 for either side. Yeah. yeah it's an even game. That is the most even. Yeah. Like, I was I was super surprised by that because Straight you got, you got well, two Winnipeg, up and one once. But – but Winnipeg has now got home ice advantage. Yeah. The, uh, Which the, doesn't matter a lot in hockey. It matters in Nashville. I don't know that a lot of other c- cities have what Nashville has. No, and not, I'm talking not a about chance. Pittsburgh only wouldn't have it because this ain't nothing new to them. It's like the Pats trying to sell Super Bowl tickets. Yeah. The last couple of Super Bowls, there ain't a lot of Patriots fans there because – They all already gone. They, they've, already spent, they've already spent their bucket list on going. Yeah. They've been to seven in 17 years. The Vegas Golden Knights and the San Jose Sharks are both tied at a game apiece. That, the, the Knights. That was surprising The to Knights me. are incredible. Uh, they are. Incredible. They are. Uh, they are favored minus 125 for the series. You can get the Sharks at plus 105 right now. Did you After know the Sharks that? stole home court, okay. or home, uh, home ice, mm-hmm. it, is there value there? Oh, I would take the Knights. I'd take the Knights You'd right take now. the Knights, not yeah. the Sharks. No, no, I'd take the Knights. And let me tell you why. Would you take them even at minus 125? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to take them now because they're getting good odds before the odds were really crappy on them. Okay. Let me tell you why I'm not scared of that. That is the first game the Golden Knights have lost in the playoffs. Yeah. They swept round one. They won game one pretty easily, like four to nothing. Just killed them. They lost that one in a double overtime, just nut breaker of a game. Did you watch the uh, the Penguins Capitals? I did because I game lost two. money on game one. And I didn't bet it on game two. Okay. the They're tied at uh, one, one game one. each. Now, after the Penguins uh, lost the game, game two, now this was at Washington. Yes. Uh, they think that the refs cost them the game. I, I have not been able to find what exactly it was that they were. Oh, the goal? Yeah. The goal is absolutely a goal. The goal is a- – they've got it blown up. I've seen it all over the Internet. The goal is absolutely a goal. Well, why – while watching, if I can get a word out, the Predators game, <laughs> like in between periods, they would talk about it. It's absolutely a goal, and it's not close. Like okay. you zoom it in, and you see the puck is past the white. You see the puck is on the other side of the, the pipe. Now, that would have only made it 2-3, but with the Penguins, the way they score, if you watch them, yeah. they'll score all their points in three minutes. It, doesn't, it might be the first period. It might be the second period. But it's the, the third same period. thing they did against yeah. Nashville but they, last year. They score fast. And, and if they're down two goals with four minutes left to go, it's really hard to come back. But if they're only down one and the, and the sphincters start tightening up yep. in, in Washington where they just are choking dogs and they're used to this, I'm telling you, that they lo- Washington loses that game if they call that goal. I've watched, and that's not about the Penguins, I've watched enough Washington Capitals games. Washington loses that game because that team chokes it away. That's been the uh, the knock on them, and that for and I will tell you this now. though that that was absolutely a goal. There was some chicanery going on in the NHL. That's a fact. That happened. The Penguins are still the favorites at uh, minus one thirty five. You oh, yeah. grab the Caps at plus one fifteen. I wouldn't take them. So you're you're all about some Penguins right now. Yeah, I don't I don't believe in the Capitals at all. I might be wrong, but I don't I don't think so. The Bruins are up one game to none over the Tampa Bay Lightning. Does they that surprise the, you? They beat the hell out of them. Yeah, they really did. They I beat was, the hell out of them. I was a little surprised. Watched every second of that game. Because their first series went seven games. They're really good. And the Lightning got through with theirs real early. Was it a little rust? The, no. The Bruins are just better. The Bruins are just really good. 
right. So the, the Bruins, Bruins are, are the favored. Bruins in game one, in, in series one was playing Toronto Maple Leafs. Toronto Maple Leafs hadn't been relevant or good in a long time. Yep. And, and but they were fighting. And they are fighting. They are trying so hard to be good. And and that they were going up against somebody who just willed themselves to seven games and yeah. almost won. I mean they. They didn't. The the Bruins beat them pretty bad, but they 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 all every game up until Game Seven was just super tight. The Bruins are up one nothing, and are now favored at minus one ninety five yeah, for the series. Yeah, while the Lightning gonna, are plus one sixty five. You're going to pay a, you're going to pay a huge penalty to take them. I took them early. Are they worth taking? Not now. Well, Not I now. mean, I think it's a lock. I I might be dead wrong when saying that. I think it's a lock. I think they are going to the next round. Okay. Okay, so they're, they're, there's they're a little really, bit of value. But. They're really good. You're going to pay a premium, but it would be like betting the Rockets right now. Like, I'm going to pay a tax, but I'm going to win it. Yeah. So, okay. It's free money. Okay, I like that. I like that. A little hockey talk. A little bit, a little bit. Maybe so, more, than, more than most people care about. We will... Uh, especially people down here in the South. We will possibly be back later this week. We don't know exactly, for sure. Gary's uh Gary's living with a ticking time bomb. Yeah. Yeah. I've got uh, a son that is on the way and the due date is on Thursday. The doctors said that he should have been here last week. So really at any point this door that is behind us on on Facebook if you can see it, that thing could have opened up at any point and told us that we have to cut the show short. Luckily we got to go the full distance today and that's fine. Um but in the meantime, if we are not here, it won't be for long. We will be back FYI soon. FYI to Caleb, if you can get a, a phone line that will call America really well, or you Skype, if you want we'll to get come you on, on, give us a shout, brother. Just yeah. give us some heads up. We'll make this thing happen for you. We will absolutely let you on. Where, where is he right now? Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Well, we I go. mean, he might be on some type of vacation because they have weird holidays. There we go. He said, you got it. That works. So the next go round, we'll schedule it and we'll let everybody know whenever that. I is. might have to Skype with you if Gary's incapacitated. That's not a bad idea. So it may not go full uh, Facebook Live, but but we can make it work one way or another. So you guys know what to do. Go check out the website winningcureseverything.com. We've got a story up today about the 53 SEC NFL draft picks. Go check that out. Go subscribe to the podcast. Give us a like on Facebook. Share it out. Give us a review over on iTunes. <sighs> Till next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful week, and we will talk to you later. It's time for the rundown. Remember, check out winningcureseverything.com. You can give us a like on Facebook, facebook.com slash winningcureseverything. You can follow us on Twitter, at winningcures. You can follow myself, at at Gary WCE. You can follow me at Chris B G N N E C H R I S B G I A N N I N I. You can also email the show that's winning cures everything at gmail.com. And we now have a voicemail line. That number is 551 226 9899. If you want to call and bash us for talking bad about your favorite team or praise us or just tell us about how awesome your team is doing, leave us a voicemail. That number again is 551 551- 226-9899 and we may toss it on the show. Thank you for supporting this show and until next time, have a good one guys.